Hello and welcome to FlipClockFans.com. This is Mackie. Today I want to talk about a flip clock mechanism in, in general. Uh, the reason I've got this one out is I was uh, doing a little repair on a um, what's called a digital high time ceiling alarm clock made by Stancraft. It's the one that projects the ceiling on the time. Um, they're not exact when they project that time, but this one was very, way off. So I took out took it apart and found out that the projection is actually done by this wheel which uh, a light shines through and there's little bitty numbers on there and the light shines shoot through, bounces off a mirror, goes through, lands and hits the ceiling and it was adjusted way off so I'll, I'll readjust that and get that back in so that it works uh, but what I wanted to do is to talk about a mechanism in general because some people may be interested in it like I am and since I had it apart I thought I'd work on it and, and show you a few things uh, first thing I noticed was that the Japan label, now these are copal mechanisms and they're all, all of them are made in Japan and they're very well made. But on most of the copal clocks you'll see the Japan label uh, at 11. So if you have a flip clock, check it out. On every 11, every time it comes around at 11 you'll see Japan. Uh, so what we got here is a motor, it's, it's run, they call it synchronous because it's running on 60 hertz. Uh, voltage, uh, voltage of your uh, or the uh, hertz of your um, electric supply in the United States that's 60 hertz on 120 volts and what you've got here is a motor the um, uh, brass looking gear here will turn these gears and it gears it down so that every 24 hours this wheel will spin once which makes sense because it's on the hour and this wheel will spin once every hour so, which makes sense because that's displaying the minutes. So, what I wanted to uh, show you specifically is how this flip mechanism works. Now, as we go, what you'll see is about 18, the 9 will flip. Now, still 9. But they did that, I believe, to make this more smooth display. Um, so, now that what will happen next is we want to make sure that the 9 changes to a 10 exactly at the right time. So what you're going to see is you're going to see around th a thickening right around this area here, which is going to push this little s spring that's got a um, catch on it. It's going to push that over and catch that nine. So what what we're going to do is we're going to go into about 37 or 38. You're going to see that it pushes that over. So it's pushed that over. And then uh, later here we'll see that the silver tine has released that tile or page and is now being held by that tab. Now when it gets closer to 59 what will happen is that thickened area which, which you can still see here the thickened area of plastic this wheel the thickened area drops away now you won't be able to see that but now the only thing that's holding that spring back is a little extra tab on the 59 that none of the other numbers have. So that when the 59 drops, the 9 will drop to 10 at the same time. So it's real ingenious how that works, I think anyway. So that's the basic operation of uh, your most common copal uh, flip clock mechanisms. If you have any uh, questions or concerns, uh, please come visit us at flipclockfans.com where we have a form where you can ask your questions. It's a brand new form, it's not many people on it yet, but it's a great place to get your questions answered. Thanks a lot. We'll see you at flipclockfans.com.